What is going on, everybody? It is Treeb from Treeb Talks here, and I've seen this picture circling, circling around Jaguar Facebook groups of the all-time Jaguar team. And though he did get some names wrong in there, and there were some people that shouldn't really be in there, and there's some people that really should be in there, I thought that it would be more fun today to make the worst possible Jacksonville Jaguar squad of all time. So you've heard of the all-time great squad, but let's give you the all-time terrible squad, ladies and gentlemen. This is the worst possible Jaguars team ever built. One to go up top, dumps it off, cross the middle, for that. What is going on, everybody? What is going on, everybody? What is going on, everybody? It is Treeb from Treeb Talks here for another episode of Treeb Talks. Now, I hope you guys are ready to discuss the greatness that is bad Jacksonville Jaguar football. I feel like Jags fans almost get more of a kick out of talking about the bad days than the good days. At least that's what it seems like sometimes. And I mean, I'm one of those guys too. I like to go through the past and be like, oh my god, we were so bad. And that is what motivated this video to make the worst possible Jaguar starting lineup ever. So first and foremost, we're going to start things off with the offensive side of the ball, starting off with the quarterback, and who better to do it than Blaine Gabbert. Now, I was really close to doing Blake Bortles, because if we threw 2018 Blake Bortles in there with this team, they're going 0-16, but Blaine Gabbert, he's about the same way, uh, except he's way less durable, so maybe if he gets injured, Blake Bortles can be the backup quarterback, and he could come in and uh, tear up in garbage time like what he does, and then suck, you know, mostly throughout the game. But Blaine Gabbert, definitely pound for pound the worst starting quarterback the Jaguars have ever had, and is definitely the rightful starter on this 0-16 worst possible uh, Jacksonville Jaguar squad. And, yeah, definitely deserves it. He's not going to be able to connect with any of the wide receivers downfield because these wide receivers are all garbage. But he does have some chemistry with some of them because most of them were on the team when Blaine was on the team. You're going to have to wait a little bit until we dive in to the wide receivers of this squad. But first, after we introduced, of course, Blaine McGabbert, we're going to go over the offensive line. The starting guards are going to be Will Rackley and Uchi Winari. Both of those guys were starters together at one point. And they were terrible. They were they were terrible, terrible offensive linemen. And they definitely could not get the job done. Uh, on the interior, Blaine Gabbert was getting sacked left and right. And when David Garrard was the quarterback, David Garrard was getting sacked left and right. This offensive line could possibly not hold up. And this offensive line definitely nowadays would not hold up if this was an actual NFL squad. Like I said, this is the 0-16 Jacksonville Jaguars we're trying to build here. And Will Rackley and Uchi Winari are definitely the two guys to get that job done at the offensive guard position. Coming up next, we got the tackles. We got Guy Wimper and Austin Pastor. I know you guys are probably expecting Luke Jokel here, and I was too. But then, do you remember how bad Guy Wimper was? And then, do you remember how bad Austin Pastor was? I remember just watching Jaguar games, and then you'd see Blaine or David. Uh, even Blake back in the day t dropped back, and they got pressure right in their face damn near right away. And that's why us Jags fans need to appreciate the offensive line we have now because it has came leaps and bounds from where it w used to be. And uh, Guy Wimper and Austin Pastor holding down the edges, uh, especially in this AFC South, that's a definite, definite 0-16 season for y'all right there with those two holding down the tackle position for the Jaguars and the all-time worst Jaguar squad with Guy Wimper and Austin Pastor holding down the edges at the tackle position. Now, like I said, Blaine Gabbert, he might have some chemistry with some of these wide receivers. And let me dive into who these receivers are. Ace Sanders. Y'all remember Ace Sanders? He was probably the number one guy from about 2011 to 2013. The Jaguars had no receiving targets, and it seemed like every year they would just draft somebody irrelevant and be like, oh, we have a glaring wide receiver issue. Let's get another guy from, like, Liberty, and we will get into that in a little bit. Let's just get a guy from a smaller school. You know, it's going to be all right. Like, that that's who we're going to build our future into. You know, he dominated in D3, so he's definitely going to dominate in D1. You know, that was... 
That was uh, Wayne Weaver's thought process for the wide receiver position. But uh, A. Sanders was a third-round selection out of South Carolina, and he just never could find his stride. Even in the punt return, kick return game uh, where he was supposed to strive at, he didn't necessarily do too great at that either. But... Uh, we will always remember A. Sanders because uh, maybe he was a guy that just didn't reach his full potential and, you know, he just really could not ball out with the Jags. And unfortunately for uh, Mr. A. Sanders, that kind of put a asterisk over his entire career because he was never ever to play again until we built this worst all-time Jaguar squad where he is wide receiver number one. Coming in at wide receiver number two, we have the man himself, Rashad Green. We were mad at Rashad Green as early as this season when he dropped the pass against the Colts and it was intercepted. Who who can who can forget that? Just dropped it. Just dropped it. It was hard, hard to watch. And, you know, that moment alone puts Rashad Green on this team. And it's also because he's like a mosquito, dude. This guy's always all up in your business. Like, he's he's been on the team for a lot longer than he's had any reason to be on the team. And I think this is the, finally the year that the Jags uh, kind of move on from the Rashad Green project. And, you know, it's really shocking that it's taken him this long. Because it's not like he's on the field often, you know. Like, he's he's a fifth, sixth wide receiver, yet he's still on this team somehow. But uh, he's probably going to be let go this season. But he does have a starting spot at the number two wide receiver on the worst Jaguar team ever built. So he does have that. And finally, wide receiver number two, I mean number three, we got Mike Brown, the former quarterback out of Liberty turned wide receiver, ladies and gentlemen. And Mike Brown and Ace Sanders were at one point the number one and number two wide receiver for the Jags. And Rashad Green was in there at number three. You know, this was an actual Jaguar wide receiver core. Which is crazy, because a lot of these guys played on the same team. So, you know, that really goes to show how bad the Jags truly were in the early 2010s. And, you know, in the early 2000s as well, there was a couple of splash early 2000s seasons. But other than that, not really too much. And, you know, Mike Brown definitely being one of the worst wide receivers the Jaguars have ever had starting on the field. But, you know, he never really got an opportunity because he was always on a trash team. I always liked him. I liked him. I thought he had some potential, and the potential was there. But, unfortunately, he just never met those uh that criteria to be a really really good wide receiver yeah in jacksonville so that's why he's going to be on here and then at the center position a position i totally skipped over we got luke boenko he was only a starter for until brandon linder came into town so and the jacks have always had good centers because you know brad meester has been around for a long time and then during that time they were trying to figure out who their center is going to be and then they found it out in Brandon Linder but Luke Boenko was the uh, project beforehand and he's definitely the worst. <laughs> yeah, he's definitely the worst center in Jaguar history and now the moment you've been waiting for. Who's going to be playing running back for the Jacksonville Jaguars? No man other than the guy who ran the ball at the one yard line four times in a row and literally got stuffed four times in a row. I'm talking about the legend, the man that was supposed to be the next great Jaguar running back, Toby Gerhardt. Toby Gerhardt, man. He was the worst running back that I've ever had the displeasure of watching, and I am so glad I never had to watch him again. He was so bad. He was so frustrating. He'd get injured. Then Denard Robinson came in. He had a good good season there, and then he got hurt. But Toby Gerhardt, a guy that could not stay healthy, and a guy that is the worst running back in Jaguar history that has started a game, and that's why he earns himself a spot on the starting offense of the worst Jaguars team ever built. Now we are going to be talking about the defensive side of the ball, starting off with the secondary, another position that the Jags have kind of constantly been pretty good at. I mean, Rasheen Mathis, and then uh, Rasheen Mathis, Jalen Ramsey, A.J. Boye, uh, Aaron Beasley, that's the guy I was thinking of, Aaron Beasley. You know, these guys were all terrific corners during their day. But there have been a couple of starting corners that have let down the Jags fans and the Jaguars in general. Starting off with the first corner, Dwayne Grotz. Dwayne Grotz was the number one corner for the longest time in Jacksonville. And I just remember watching him get burnt 
week in and week out and just thinking to myself, why do I even watch this team? Why why do I even watch football? I, like They will score on 60-yard pass plays literally every single time, and Dwayne Grotz will be 15 yards behind him. You know, like Dwayne Grotz, definitely one of the worst starting corners the Jags have ever had, and it's a damn shame because you know he was a part of a bad team, so he didn't necessarily get a fair shout or anything like that. But unfortunately, he does make his way onto the 0-16 Jaguar squad. At the cornerback number one, at quarterback number two, a guy that wasn't necessarily that bad because, you know, we had to really try and, you know, pick somebody to be a CB number two. We got Fernando Bryan, a guy we talked about uh, a little earlier with the first round selections. He was a first round selection uh, back in the 90s. And he came in and he didn't do too hot. Uh, five seasons in Jacksonville, he racked up four interceptions. So, you know, that's not good numbers. And he started. 14, 10, 16, and 15 games, so definitely not great stats to have at the cornerback position, which is why he has to come in at Q, I mean at cornerback number two on this worst Jaguar squad ever built. Now my safeties are two safeties that started together side by side and were the most frustrating safety duo in Jaguar history. I swear every time I seen them on the field, I cringed and I cringed so hard because they were both so bad. It's Jonathan Cyprian and Josh Evans. Who else was it going to be? Probably the worst safety duo in NFL history let alone Jaguar history. These two just were terrible, 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 and they could not, everything would get over the top of them. I remember when the Titans signed Cyprian, I was literally laughing out loud. I hate Jonathan Cyprian. I hate him, hate him, hate him. I don't, uh, it's because he's bad, but also because he went to the Titans and he thinks he's good, but he's also really, really bad. Like, he's just bad. Like, I hate him. I, I can't tell you how much I don't like Jonathan Cyprian. I just, I don't like him. In fact, one of my favorite moments in Jaguar history was in 2017 against the Titans when Mercedes Lewis just picked that guy up and was just looking at him. Just looking at him. Was like, what the fuck are you going to do? What are you going to do? I have you literally picked up in the air. You're literally looking like a bitch right now. So, Jonathan Cyprian was bad. He let everything get over the top of him. His footwork was terrible. His angles were bad. I remember just watching like him trying to tackle somebody, and he's taking this wide of an angle, and it's like, God, you are terrible. Josh Evans really never got a fair opportunity. He was a fourth-round, fifth-round selection, and uh, he was kind of just thrusted in there into a complete rebuild project. And You know, it's not necessarily his fault he didn't do too well. He did do all right in the AAF during his time there, so... Uh, you know, not necessarily fair for Josh Evans, but that's just the way she goes. Now let's go over to the linebacking core. At middle linebacker, we got Brian Schwartz, another uh, late-time Jaguar player. If, you know, you older Jags fans remember him, you know, leave leave some information about him in the comment section down below. You know, all three of these linebackers were 90s linebackers because, you know, that's another position the Jags have always been pretty stout as the linebacker position. And then we got Clint Ingram and Nick Grayson. At the outside linebacker position, these three just simply put up the worst stats out of any starting linebackers in Jaguar history, so it just made the most sense to put them here. But again, it was in the 90s, so I didn't watch them play. If you guys did, you know, maybe I got them wrong. Maybe they're actually pretty good. Leave your opinions on them in the comments section down below. And then at the defensive end position, we got Matt Roth and Jason Babin. Holy shit, what a waste of money Jason Babin was. I remember when we signed Jason Babin, and everybody was excited. They're like, Jason Babin, the Jaguars are back. Ah. And then he just ended up being so, so shit. So, so shit. Like, he'd make, like, one splash play every ten games. And then we'd be like, oh, the signing was worth it. But no, he is definitely one of the worst investments the Jags have ever made. And one of the worst defensive ends ever to play for the Jaguars, to ever start for the Jaguars. Hence why he's on the all-time worst Jaguar uh, defensive lineup, so that's why he comes in at defensive end. At defensive tackle, we have C.J. Mosley. I totally forgot about C.J. Mosley. He only played one game, sucked it up, got, I think, two tackles for a loss, no sacks, and this guy was just terrible, terrible, terrible. You know, from the second he stepped onto the field to the second he stepped off, uh, he was a bad, bad player. And then we got Red Bryant, a guy we brought, me and Jason brought up uh, in our podcast the other day. Uh, Red Bryant, one of the most uh, forgotten Jaguar free agent signings. And it was a big one back in the day. I'll never forget. It was a big one. I remember because we just got Gus Bradley and we're trying to build a Seattle Seahawks-esque defense. And he came in and he was trash. 
and he was so bad, and he didn't do anything good for us. He was nothing but a big guy in the middle to stop the run, and he didn't even stop the run. So, you know what I mean? Uh, Red Bryant, definitely deserving of his slot on the worst Jaguar team ever built. And that was the worst Jacksonville Jaguar team ever built. What did you guys think? Leave your comments down below. Don't forget to check the links down below as well. You can like me on Facebook, at Trey Talks. Follow me on Twitter, at Trey Talks. Follow me on Instagram, at Trey Von Pixley. Also, if you haven't yet, make sure you hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button as well so you can get notified every single time I drop a new video. I drop new content on this channel six days a week. Ain't nobody out working me. Them's just straight facts. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. And as always, you guys have a great